Welcome to lecture number 20 for ECE 320 Electronics 1, Diode Transistor Logic or DTL Logic. Now what we've looked at before is using diodes to implement fuzzy logic. That's logic where you can have multiple levels. Uh, now we're going to go back to the black and white world of the Sith where you have only two outputs, true or false. Now previously with fuzzy logic, what we're looking at is with diodes, I can do a min function or a max function. And a min is kind of like logical and. If I take the minimum of the three functions, it's only true if all three are true. In contrast, if I want to find the maximum of A, B, and C, I flip the diodes. Max is like OR. The output is 5 volts. If A is 5 volts, OR B, OR C. Now the problem with fuzzy logic is if I go through a diode, I'm going to lose 0.7 volts for each diode. And if I have six or seven gates in a row, that's a problem. Uh, second problem is this, get, this uh, gate doesn't have a lot of current capability. To fix that, what DTL logic does is it takes the previous max and min circuit and then adds a transistor. What that does is that cleans up the logic level. It converts this either to five volts when the transistor's off or zero volts, or actually 0.2 volts when it's on. And it also allows me to drive a bigger load. So for example, suppose I want to build a DTL NOR gate. Maximum would be the diode spacing right. So this is the maximum of A and B. If either one is five volts, I get current. That current will saturate the transistor, give me logic zero. So why is zero if A or B is true? Um, if they're both false, there's no current flow, the transistor's off, and the output is five volts or a little bit le less if you have a load. So to analyze the circuit, we've got the two cases, either the transistor's on or off. To start with, suppose one of the two is on, and we're just going to make A 5 volts, B 0 volts, just to make it a little bit cleaner so you know which diode is on. In that case, diode A is turned on, and I've got one, two diodes in series with ground, so the 5 volts loses 1.4 volts, I've got 3.6 volts across 10K, giving you 360 microamps. That drives the transistor. If beta is 100, that allows 36 milliamps to flow. I'm only trying to push 4.8 milliamps. So since beta IB is more than IC, uh, 36 is more than 4.8, the transistor saturates and you get 0.2 volts out. That gives you a NOR, Y is zero if A or B is five volts. And it doesn't have to be five volts. As long as the transistor saturated, this is zero volts out. The lowest A can be in saturate is if this is 4.8 milliamps, I have to have at least 48 microamps flowing. And 0.7 plus 0.7 plus 48 microamps times 10K gives you 1.88 volts. So logic one for this circuit is anything above 1.88 volts. The second case is when both A and B are zero. If both these are zero, I have no current flow. The transistor turns off and I get 4.54 volts. And as long as the, the, there is no current flow in the base, I'm at logic level zero, which says that anything less than 1.4 volts counts as logic level zero. So this is what you have for log logic levels. Zero volts is logic false, five volts is logic true, in addition, anything from 1.88 volts up is logic 1, 1.44 volts down is logic 0. Down here, the transistor is saturated. Up here, the transistor is off. Um, in the middle, I, I'm in the active region. So I want to keep away from here. I want to keep the transistor either on or off, black or white. Again, we're doing the logic of the Sith Lord. You can check that in Circuit Lab. Again, the, Ideal diode says it won't turn on until 1.4 volts for two diodes. That's not exactly true. It depends upon the diode you're using. If I use this diode, uh, 1N4148, kind of the default for Circuit Lab, and then have a sine wave. This is a 2.5 volt DC offset, 2.5 volt peak. So it's going to sweep from 0 volts to 5 volts back down to 0. I can then sit there and check. As soon as the input drops below this point, the transistor starts to turn on. So that's the logic level one, uh, anything above 1.46 volts. And right here, I'm fully saturated. 
anything below this point, 0.688 volts, results in Y being saturated, that's logic level zero. So experimentally, I can find the logic levels. It's about between 0.7, anything between zero and 0.7 is zero. 1.46 to five is logic one. You can also calculate the fan out. From the previous circuit, if I want to drive another circuit, each circuit is going to draw 327 microamps. That current has to come from somewhere. That comes from through the 1K resistor. 327 microamps at 1K means each one I connect drops its voltage by 0.3 volts. If I'm only allowed to have a 2 volt droop on the output, then I can drive up to 12 gates. That's how you get fan out. Back in 275, there's only so many gates you can uh, connect. Um, that's part of the reason. Too many gates draws too much current. Too much current drops the voltage. Uh, that was a, uh, a NOR gate. A NAND gate would be a min function that you flip the diodes. In this case, they've got two paths for the current. If both A, if either A or B is zero, current goes left. This becomes 0.7. 0.7 is not enough to turn on these two diodes and the transistor's off. If both A and B are high, now current goes right. That saturates the transistor. The reason for this diode is because I want to make sure that when A is zero and B is zero, current goes left, but not right. If I take that out, I've got a choice between going left at 0.7, left at 0.7, or right at 0.7, and I'm not really sure what's going to happen. That extra diode makes sure that I need 1.4 volts to go right, 0.7 to go left. Make sure that only one of the two diodes is on. So to analyze it, let's start out with one of these two is zero. Um, in that case, diode B turns on, and I get 0.7 volts right here. No current goes to the right. I need 1.4 volts to turn on these two diodes, so the transistor turns off, and the output is high. By voltage division, I get 4.54 volts. And as long as the current goes left rather than right, this is logic level zero. So logic level zero is anything less than 0.7. If both these are five volts, in contrast, now current goes right. It takes this path to ground through 1.4 volts rather than going to five. In this case, the current is five minus 1.4, 3.6 volts across 10K, 360 microamps. That allows beta IB, allows 36 milliamps to flow. I'm only trying to push four, so beta IB is more than IC, the transistor saturates. And the logic level is, as long as the current goes right, I'm at logic level one. As long as this is above 0.7 volts, in theory, current will go right, so the logic level is anything above 0.7. In circuit lab, you can test it. Again, take the input and have it sweep up and down. And what you see is that if the voltage droops below, or stays above 811 millivolts, um, the transistor saturated. If it droops below 301 millivolts, it turns off. So those are actually the logic levels uh, found experimentally. Again, diodes are not ideal, so likewise the previous analysis is a little bit off. If I want to build an AND gate, what we just built was the NOR gate and a NAND gate. If I want to build an AND gate, I just have an inverter coupled with a NAND function. What that tells you is you need two transistors to build an AND gate, just one transistor to build an AND. Uh, that's part of the reason that you prefer using NANDs and NORs in logic. It's fewer transistors. And using that, I can now design something like this. Let's build a D flip-flop at the transistor level. This is the logic for D flip-flop. Each of these is a NAND gate. So replace each one with this TTL or DTL equivalent. And I get here, this. This is the first NAND, second NAND, third NAND, fourth NAND. That is a D flip-flop at the transistor level using DTL logic. Uh, there are a couple limitations for DTL. That's part of the reason it kind of faded out of fashion. One of the problems is the frequency limitation. Diodes are inherently capacitors. Uh, when a diode is turned off, I have a depletion zone and two charges on both sides of the depletion zone that make it a capacitor. Capacitors and resistors make RC circuits. There's a max frequency they can operate. 
So if you take this circuit and try to operate at higher and higher frequencies, what you see is something like this. This is from Circuit Lab. I cranked up the clock frequency, and you can see right here, it takes about this long, about 80 nanoseconds to go from logic level 0 to logic level 1. Um, that's actually 100, 170 nanoseconds. That sets the upper limit of frequency for DTL logic. The problem what's causing this is that diode, if I want to increase the clock frequency, I need to get rid of the diodes. That's what TTL logic is. That's our next lecture. A second problem with DTL logic is you get current spikes. One way to check that is take the circuit, instead of having these go to ground, go to ground through a 1 ohm resistor. Then measure the voltage. That's what I do in lab. Otherwise, what I can do in circuit lab, I can just say, what is the current through that R6? And circuit lab will do that. And this is what it looks like. This is 1 millivolt is 1 ohm. I get these spikes. Every time there's a 0 to 1 transition, I get a spike. That's really common on digital logic. Anytime you switch from logic level 0 or logic level 1, you get this current spike. And that's the capacitors and the diodes charging, discharging. What that means is that if you have analog circuitry and digital circuitry in the same circuit, keep the power separate. The digital section is going to be, section is going to be adding spikes to the current line. That's going to cause noise on the analog section. So again, you don't want to have mixed circuitry. If you have analog and digital, make sure the analog has its own separate part of the circuit board, has its own power supply. Otherwise, the digital part is going to be injecting noise on the analog section. And that's lecture number 20, DTL logic for ECE320. Our next lecture will look at TTL logic, a slightly more advanced, faster version of digital logic.